Imagine this. We heave a sigh of relief if the air quality index levels are very poor. Because we are used to now severe and hazardous levels. We have normalized living with poisonous, toxic air. We are nearing 2024, but allow me to remind you of what has happened in just the last decade. It was just 10 years ago that Delhi became infamous as the most polluted city in the world, named by the World Health Organization for the first time. Unfortunately, over the last decade, several cities of India, Kolkata, Mumbai, among others, have passed caught up multiple times. This gives us a sense of what the challenge can soon snowball into if we lower our guards, which we have. A simple example. Now, and the joke is now on us actually, the media persons do prime time debates around air quality index when the AQI crosses 400 mark. And I'm telling media persons because it's always said first start with cleaning your own house. But remember, a very poor category air is equivalent to smoking 20 cigarettes a day. Severe, around 30 to 40. And imagine you and I, our young, small children, infants, vulnerable groups are going around their daily lives, doing what they need to, doing what they must to earn their livelihoods with breathing this toxic gas. According to University of Chicago's Energy Policy Institute, people of Delhi particularly could have their lives shortened by almost 11.9 years due to poor air that they breathe. In November alone, it was severe or nearly severe category at least 17 times. This is your show. We are opening up our lines for citizens like you to share their experiences and we can only hope that we continue to put the focus on issues that really matter to all of us because this is not about just a few privileged but this is about all of us who just spend our days struggling to get a living with poisonous air. And even as you dial our numbers, I'm also being joined by a panel, Jaydar Gupta, who's the founder for Nirvana being, as for Nirvana, as well as Bhavreen Khandari, environmentalist and member, My Right to Breathe, and Dr. Manoj Kumar Goyal, who's the head for pulmonology at Fortis Hospital. Thank you very much, all three of you, for joining us. The whole focus of doing this show right now is, you know, unfortunately, at some point today, across the national capital region and the north of India, many of us sighed a sigh of relief. We said, phew, it's not severe. But that's really the problem. We have normalized breathing toxic air. Bhavreen, do you want to get in first with your com comment? Uh, Bhavreen, sorry, uh, I'm you so sorry. I think mute, if you could yeah, unmute yourself. it is. It's 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 unmuted now. Sorry, and thank you so much. I really appreciate that you've taken a stand uh, quite clearly. Uh, you know, admitting as well that the media also speaks of uh, air pollution, which is really a such a huge public health crisis. Only for those two weeks, but this is really the new normal. Uh, and uh, as much as um, uh, you know, we're blaming the governments, etc. It's the citizens itself are also admitting that uh, now kind of getting used to a lovely sunny day and uh, the Christmas, for example. I mean, how many, how many outdoor um, events happened? And uh, I have to say that that we were, many of us were measuring the AQI was much, averagely over 500 and uh, absolutely unacceptable. This is what we are breathing and throughout the year. In fact, there are uh, some machines that can, that can only measure up to 500. They can't measure more than that, isn't it? Absolutely, and uh, and it's not it's not possible for every citizen to be actually caring. But now I think we, we people like us are advising our own friends and family that AQI monitor is supposed to be your uh, gadget, you know, like your watch and your uh, you know uh, the weather that you check in the day. It has to be, and that's what I said in the morning today to now that I think and every day we need to see the AQI on the screens 
because it's become uh, like you said the new normal even a, I, I, we, we don't see anything 60 is impossible we have not even seen 150 or 200 but we are just being kind of uh, uh, this narrative is kind of being built that uh, we, we tend to just uh, believe when we see the smog the rest of the time we uh, tend to just ignore it and uh, uh, as you've clearly said and I'll add to it every third child in Delhi has damaged lungs this is a study from 2019 and how worse can it how get? How sad. Weather here. How sad. Uh, how he's, he's, absolutely sad. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, with Bobby, Jether here, just, I Sorry, I but let me just interrupt you because I've got a caller and we can't keep the callers on hold. No. I'm being joined at this point by Shanti Swaroop, who's calling from Vijaywada. Please go ahead, Miss Shanti. What do you have to say? Shanti Swaroop. Vijaywada. This pollution is problem to entire India. This is, there must be immediate, one of the ministry immediately appoint. Why? Because the pollution means it affects any type of problem. And many people are coming to Delhi and go away also. Meantime, all people are coming there. Nobody knows how it affected. How it affected, nobody knows. They are giving the calculations. How much? 6 percent, 7 percent. This is not understood by all the people. Meantime, it must be immediate at least affiliated government organization across the state, across the country. Me, besides the, the uh, I have only one request is it affects in all the places, not only Delhi. We are we have elaborated the problem, but one thing is there public which beyond the 60 years they will be questioned first. They will be questioned, they will not notified also. Thank you, thank you. I understand your concern, Mr. Shanti, and I'm really sorry we tend to focus so much on Delhi NCR. But really, it's not about just Delhi NCR. It's also a national capital, which means people from all over the country keep coming here. It's a problem not just of uh, the capital region, but so many cities, Kolkata, um, uh, Mumbai, are among the very severe or severe category. You know, they keep revolving between that. Ruby from Greater Noida joining us at this point. Go ahead, please, Miss Ruby. See, I'm really disheartened that we have actually come to live in uh, Delhi NCR area because, you know, I, the, I've got an 86-year-old mother uh, and my mother living here with me. And what is the big deal? We are just gasping for fresh air. Yeah? We are paying our taxes. We are paying everything. We are paying road tax, it's a tax on your salaries, tax for everything that you get to eat. And what's the big deal? Yeah, you have to uh, have put in an oxygen concentrator in her room just because she cannot breathe. Yeah, people have a right to live. Uh, some this is absolute apathy of the government. You know that they don't do anything about the pollution. Right from school, we are teaching you know to keep things clean and to keep the environment clean. I mean, this is total disregard for human. I mean, Ms. Ruby, one question. Do you have any construction activities around you? Do you have any construction? Do you see construction happen around you? Yes, all over there is construction happening. All over there is construction happening. All over, you know, without the license, without permission in close pro right. proximity to, you know, it is really okay. disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Ru Mrs. Ruby, for joining us at this point. Let me also get in um, the doctor who is on our panel right now, Dr. Manoj Kumar. You've heard a few of the callers say at this point, but can you just really break this down for us, Dr. Manoj? In a very simple layman's term, what are we really staring at? Actually, you know, pollution is now a perennial problem. It is not, uh, you know, it will be here for a month or so and go away. That doesn't happen. So we are not only exposed to acute, uh, you know, uh, problems due to pollution, but also the chronic problems due to pollution. So acute, in, you know, problems would be, you know, somebody would develop a bronchitis, a pneumonia, a lung infection, sinusitis, uh, earache, um, you know, runny nose, burning in eyes. One of one can have a, you know, ischemic heart disease, heart attack. So these are the acute. But chronically, with chronic exposure, because we are exposed to this bad air for so long, every year, every day then we are prone to other chronic illnesses like developing chronic obstructive lung diseases, lung cancers, coronary artery diseases, strokes, even preterm pregnancies. Uh, it can affect any organ of the body. Even, you know, arthritis can be caused by, you know, this pollution. So it's a, it's a monster which is, you know, which eats into our body. 
uh, suddenly and it will keep eating us, you know, over a period of time, you know, days and uh, nights, uh, every time. So it's a huge problem, huge, huge problem. And as, you know, the panelists were talking about the new normal, I mean, the air quality less than 150, less than 150 is acceptable. Now we never get you get an air quality less than 250, which is sort of hazardous. It's unhealthy air quality all the time, down the down the year. It's only, you know, when you were some showers, something which happens, you know, the, the AQI improves. Otherwise, if there's no shower, we have no respect at all. The pollution is there and it's eating us. All right. I'm, I'm also being joined right now by Ms. Garima. Uh, Ms. Garima, what do you have to share? Uh, hi, I don't have to share anything. I have a question to ask. Is there any plan of stopping the burning of crops in Punjab and Haryana? And recently, we even witnessed some of them happening in Noida as well. So I live in Ghaziabad, and it is a huge concern for us. Problems are there, but what is the solution? Right. In fact, Garima has asked for a very important question at this point, and that is something, it's a blame game literally between neighboring state that keeps on going. Punjab has said they've reduced the crop fires, but that's not really the case. There have been days when it's peaked even compared to before. Jaidhar, as well as Bhavreen, you have been working with the governments and panels together on this. Jaidhar, do you see really a solution to this? Because... Uh, in terms of modern technologies, there are options available. In terms of viability, can the government, can the people really look at alternatives? Is there any solution to this particular angle about crop fire? Yeah, I, I want to speak about so many things. I'll get to that. Firstly, I want to mention that there are 132 non-attainment cities in India. According to the National Clean Air Program, you were trying to name a few cities. I just want to tell you that we have 132 documented cities with a meaningful population, and that number is growing constantly. We still don't have uh, air quality monitoring, but I'm sure if we get down to putting monitors in every uh, town, village that has a population of, you know, maybe 100,000 people, we'll come up with a list that'll be over 1,000. It may be running in thousands, actually. Number two, I want to mention that uh, what we are going through right now is actually unprecedented because it's been about 60 days where we've been averaging an AQI over 300, between 300 and 400. This is what we call long-term exposure. This kind of exposure is possibly unprecedented anywhere in the world because any other government, uh, you know, when their AQI in a Paris or a uh, you know, Turkey re reaches 150, maybe 180, Singapore at maybe 100, they panic. Uh, they, you know, it's 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 identified and called as a pand pandemic and they immediately raise an emergency alarm. Like Paris, for example, will ban all diesel vehicles on, on their roads and make public transportation free for the public. So there are emergency measures that go into play to immediately, uh, you know, shut down the emissions at the source. So if there's no diesel vehicle on the road, there's no emission, okay? So that's that's what, you know, other countries do. There are solutions to fix this problem. Let me tell you that if a Mexico City or, or a, a, a Beijing could solve this problem to a large extent, there's absolutely, you know, th there are ways to do it. And, and the ways are very, very simple. I mean, it's it's going after all the sources of emission, um, you know, all, all, the, all the emissions at the source, and the second is, you know, setting up the right set of in incentives. If you're doing something that pollutes, you got to pay. So, you know, you got to incentivize good behavior and penalize bad behavior. Like incentivizing EV cars and penalizing diesel cars because the one diesel car has the emissions of about nine petrol cars. Okay, so there are still people who are glamorizing diesel, which I don't understand. As far as the farm fires are concerned, you know, that's the last thing I want to get to. Um, you know, you're out of your annual exposure sitting here in the national capital region, about three to four percent comes from farm fires. This is a hawa that, you know, Mr. Kejriwal, you know, created when he had no solution for the local emissions in Delhi and Punjab was still in the hands of the Congress. So everybody in Delhi still thinks that all of our pollution is an import from Punjab and Haryana. That's not the case. Only about three to four percent of our, our of our pollution comes from Punjab and Haryana and maybe even, you know, that's the very SCR interesting. Can you can you place. can you can you just uh, break this? Can you break this down for us? What is the source of what you're saying? It's very interesting what you're saying right now. 
look uh, you know the 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 agri burning only takes place twice a month for about 3 weeks at a time so late october to november is is the basmati burning and the in april we have the residue of wheat that is burnt so this is not a 365 source of air pollution what is a 365 uh, day source of air pollution is you know our vehicles our industry our thermal power plants uh you, you know the, the fact that you know people are burning so much of waste we, you know you go to any village outside of delhi even in delhi all of our waste is burnt and we have no solid waste right. management you see all these mountains okay. around you and you'll see them okay. occasionally set on fire they pretend that it was an accident but you know maybe it's a methane right. build up or whatever but every thing that we are throwing into our garbage bins is most of it i think i would say about 62 okay. to 60 to 70% of it is being burnt if we talk about what is happening currently you know right. you you've got a situation you where you've got fog and you've got a situation where you've got extreme cold this is what we call episode 2 this happens every year around december 20th and it lasts till you know about 31st of january this is when every poor person and even rich people okay. will start lighting Jared, fires let me just get in bhavreen at this point J- uh, bhavreen one question you know we are elect- we are nearing the election season bhavreen and uh, you've been campaigning along with several other mothers you're a mother as well um i know of parents i myself am a mother and it's just so worrying seeing our children grow in this pollution many of us have made this choice out of really no other options bhavreen do you see this become a poll issue no yeah, exactly that is the game changer until this will not come into the manifestos until it will not be an electoral issue air pollution is not going to uh, be solved uh, let's get let's be very clear and for that also like you know like i'm saying like mothers like you and me and parents and citizens everyone will have to demand for it for it after all we have to believe in it we cannot just uh, live in this uh, you know uh, uh, you know cr- crazy uh, you know uh, dream world that no there is no pollution and uh, everything is fine and uh, you know i go out and people say that that it's a nice day it's a beautiful day we have to understand that you will have to look at your uh like a you know i'm stressing that again and again do you, see you will this have become to look a at your 2024 issue it is and you will have to do that and ha- demand it after all i mean you just uh, said that 11 uh, over 11 years uh, uh less life for our children you know for our loved ones are, are we willing to accept that you know are we willing to accept that our children every third child here will uh, probably see some real uh you know disastrous uh, uh, you know report in the lives of uh, copd or lung cancer or, or what not so so i i think i think everyone right. ha- thinks the same way every parent is concerned about the children then why are we not uh, okay. really making this uh, uh, treating this like a public health crisis which it is and uh, let's not okay. fall into the same uh, last question you know, from dr manoj uh, denial last question right bhavreen let me just get in dr manoj so um dr manoj you've heard both uh, bhavreen as well as jaydhar speak no one knows no one better than you sitting here would know what this really costs for human life you are a doctor but do you see this as an election issue when you go to cast your vote will it matter to you electorally it's a matter related to human life and the civil society we as a society civil society are not going to accept this kind of air pollution this is unacceptable at all it's affecting us by large it's costing a lot of money people who you know get affected good get affected by pollution may land up in intensive care unit and may you know shell out you know lakhs of rupees and still you know the, the patient may not survive so it's a huge problem and it has to be looked after beyond the election uh, campaign it should be looked after from the human point of view from the civilized point of view a civil society a civilized society would never accept a polluted environment as we are living in this is totally unacceptable dr manoj i am also being joined by captain jaspal who is calling us from rohtak captain J- uh, captain jagpal sorry please go ahead uh, captain jagpal what do you have to share hello Yes captain Jagpal I can hear you please go ahead Captain Jagpal if you can hear us Captain Jagpal All right 
Okay. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we are able to get through to Captain Jagpal, but um, Mr. Jaydhar, Ms. Bhavreen, as well as Dr. Manoj, I cannot thank you enough for joining us. I know you do this day in and out. Your focus has been on this. But here at Mirror Now, we'll at least try to keep this focus on air pollution and the major concerns around it this election season. Even though the worst may get over after December, we may get to better spells. But here we really hope that we'll be able to put this one thing into political account. Thank you very much for joining us.